St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. St. John's is located at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia. We invite you to come worship with us in person, 8 a.m., 10.30 a.m. on Sundays and 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday nights. We have a Wednesday night Lenten services. This is the first Sunday in Lent. We'll begin our service with confession like we always do. And this is the service of the Word, not the service of the, uh, not, not Holy Communion Sunday, but this is the service of the Word. We're honoring the Bible. We come, Jesus comes to us through the Word and through sacrament of, of the Good altar. Morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning as we celebrate the first Sunday in Lent. We begin our Lent season, which of course began Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. Uh, being a non communion Sunday, we use the service of the Word, which begins on page 211 in the front of your worship book. So I invite you to turn to page 211 and invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and may the authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now begin to worship with hymn number 320, the glory of these 40 days. Hymn number 320. This is a very old hymn. It's a Latin hymn. It's written in the 11th century. We're still singing it. In the 11th century, we've carried this same hymn, the same honoring of these 40 days of Lent. This is the first Sunday of Lent. We will have 40 days, not counting Sundays, in which we will be penitent, we'll, we'll give up things, we'll consider that we are ashes, and we're human, and we look to God for our salvation.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. reading the Old Testament lesson. This when has to do with in the wilderness the and the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. As an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which your harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you, and shall put it in a basket, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. <clears throat> you shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens, will be 
reside among who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, 
and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Just one reminder, and that is, of course, Lent has started, so our midweek Lent services uh, begin. Uh, this week, we will be discussing Matthew 5, 13 through 16 from the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus tells us that we are to be the salt and light of the world. So, uh, join us next either at 1.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary or at 6.30 p.m. in the evening as we examine being salt and light. Now I ask that you give your attention to our choir for our special music.
putting that down there. Did God really say? So you start thinking with your human reason. Oh yeah, now what did God really say? And did he really mean? And then of course the devil says, Oh, he didn't mean it when he said you die. You'll have knowledge like he does. Look how wonderful that'll be. But it's that doubt in him that made Adam and Eve disobey God. So the devil begins the same thing. If you are the Son of God, see, he doesn't say to Jesus, you're the Son of God, so why don't you do this? He goes, if. And Jesus is famished, as the Bible tells us. Forty days without food. What I've been told is that in the area they believe the wilderness was where Jesus, uh, this event Jesus took place, there are stones on the ground or rocks on the ground that are flat and are shaped somewhat circular. So they remind you of a loaf of bread. Remember in Jesus' day in the Middle East, they didn't have loaves of bread like we have. Their loaves of bread were circular or kind of square shaped. It's like pita bread that you buy in a grocery store. And so these stones, for someone who was really hungry, would remind you of bread. And here, the devil says, if you're the Son of God, turn this stone into some bread. But Jesus responds by saying, man does not live by bread alone. And in Matthew's account, he goes on to say, but by the word, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Reminding us of that important point that we live by the word of God. We don't live by what society says. Uh, when it comes to those things that disobey God. We don't live by what the devil says. We live by the word of God. So that was the first temptation. Then comes the second temptation. Um, to you I will give this authority. You will, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said to you I will give this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me and I give it to him my will. If then you will worship me, you will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So here he tempts him with all the glory of the world without having to suffer through his passion and death. All the times the question is asked, Well, why is someone like a Nero, or a Domitian, or a Diocletian, or a Genghis Khan, or a Attila the Hun, a Hitler, a Stalin, a Pol Pot, a Ho Chi Minh, a Mao Zedong, a, a, a Pol Pot Kim, Kim Jong Yong, whatever his name is in North Korea. So why are people like that allowed to become rulers of the country? Well, you got the answer right here. Because <coughs> the devil has the authority over kingdoms. And he can place them to whom he wants and their power. And so when that happens, it's not that God allowed it to happen, it's that the devil made it happen. The third test. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. <coughs> Another important lesson we learn in these three attempts of trying to make Jesus disobey his Father is that we must remember that just because somebody quotes scripture, it does not mean that they are correct or that they're even a godly person. Because as we see here, the devil quotes scripture. Even the devil. He's used to misuse them. He's taken it out of context. But even the devil can quote, quote scripture. So just because someone's quoting scripture doesn't always mean they're on the side of Jesus. It could be they're using it for their own personal gain. Or they could be using it just trying to mess you up so that you follow the devil or something. But because Jesus remains obedient, he triumphs over the devil in temptation and shows us how to do so as well. 
full of the Holy Spirit. That word means to abound with the Holy Spirit, to be abundant with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is flowing through you and out of you. Just as the Holy Spirit gives strength to Jesus to withstand the temptation to the devil, the Holy Spirit gives us the strength we need as well. At our baptism, the Holy Spirit enters into our lives. It helps us and gives us strength daily to fight the Christian fight, to be that witness for Jesus Christ, to resist the temptations of the devil. Yet, unfortunately, there are many who are afraid of the Holy Spirit. They're afraid that if they listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit might point them in a direction they don't think they want to go. But if the Holy Spirit's leading, He's going to equip you, equip you with what you need to fulfill that task. Others are scared of the Holy Spirit because they see people who claim they're full of the Holy Spirit doing what they call the Holy Ghost dance. They see them running up down the aisles and shaking all this stuff, and they don't want to do that because they're afraid they're afraid to make fun of them. Or they see people speaking in tongues and they don't want to do that because they're afraid again that they'll be made fun of. But that's not sole purpose of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there to strengthen us, to help us resist temptation. As one Christian writer has said, quote, the Christian heart is the Holy Spirit's home. In the world. Now, how many of us truly allow the Holy Spirit to take up home in our heart? How many of us instead try to resist the Holy Spirit or act like the Holy Spirit's not even around? But that is what is needed in order to resist and defeat the devil. Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit. He told us the Holy Spirit would come. And he said it was to our advantage that the Holy Spirit would come. That night in the upper room, after he had washed the disciples' feet, after he had instituted the Lord's Supper, after he had talked to them, um, let not your heart be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me, after he told them about being the vine and the branches, um, after he continued to reveal more and more to them, in the 16th chapter of John, in verse 7, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now just like the disciples, if we'd been there, we would not want Jesus to go away. We would have wanted him to stay. But as he says, it's to our advantage that he goes away. So if he does so, the helper will come. The word helper, of course, referring to the Holy Spirit, it means comforter. It means advocate. It means one who stands beside us and helps us. It's one who gives us what to say in time of trouble. The word advocate comes from the judicial system. An advocate was one who advocated for the defendant, who advocated their innocence, advocated in their favor. So the Holy Spirit advocates for us before God when the devil tries to badmouth us before in front of God. When the devil starts telling God all the terrible things we've done, the Holy Spirit steps up and makes the devil be quiet by reminding everyone that we are a child of God, a child of the Heavenly Father. We have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We have been forgiven because Jesus has paid the debt of sin we owe by his death upon the cross, and therefore the accusations of Satan fall silent. That's being our advocate. He also comforts us when facing with spiritual and physical problems. He stands beside us. He helps us 
and not just witnessing to our faith, but helps us in our daily life, helps us to get to helps us to resist temptation. He gives us what to say in time of trouble. Again, quoting a Christian theologian, he said, quote, Christ departed so that the Holy Spirit could be imparted. So Christ left so the Holy Spirit could be injected into our lives. To drive a car, a normal car, not a hybrid, but a normal car that we grew up with, it takes gasoline or diesel. But most of us drive gasoline cars. So we go to the filling station, we fill up our tank with gasoline, and we drive for the week. And as we drive, every day we drive, the fuel gauge begins to go closer and closer toward empty, whichever way your fuel, fuel gauge goes. Um, and after so long a time, you're close to empty and you need to refuel. <coughs> If you don't, you're going to run out of gas and be stuck somewhere you don't want to be stuck. Or be caught at night or whatever. Well, the Holy Spirit is like gasoline for a car. We come to church and we fill up on the Holy Spirit by praising God, hearing His Word preached, participating in the Lord's Supper, uh, Bible study, what, uh, whatever. This refuels us for the upcoming week. And as the week goes along, that power and presence of the Holy Spirit begins to fade when we deal with the changes and chances of each day. Especially if we don't pray or read the Bible throughout that week do any kind of devotion. So by Sunday, we need to be back at the filling station and filling ourselves back up with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not that the Holy Spirit ever, ever leaves us. It's that as the week goes on, we get burned down by things. We kind of forget about the Holy Spirit. And it takes Sunday to remind us that that Holy Spirit is always with us. So to defeat the devil, the first thing is we have to be full of the Holy Spirit. The second thing, which sometimes scares people, is we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Again, as our text said, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. That word led means to bring someone to a certain place. It means to drive them to a certain place. Not a nominal being a little truck or something, motorcycle, but it means to drive in a sense like a sh shepherd driving a sheep, uh, as we do in, in this country, or drive cattle. Uh, so it means someone is causing you to go someplace. It means to carry someone someplace, or it means, mean, means to lead them along. Like in the Middle East, the shepherd leads his sheep along to the next pasture. So as the shepherd leads his sheep, the Holy Spirit leads us in our daily lives. The Holy Spirit carries us to salvation, sanctifies us and keeps us in the true faith calls us daily through the gospel. So we must, if we want to defeat the devil, we must allow the Holy Spirit to lead. We must not fight it, resist it, or ignore it. When we're sick, or when we have some kind of physical problem, like a wrench, or we've sprained our wrist, or sprained an ankle, pull or muscle or whatever, we go see the doctor. The doctor examines us, the doctor then gives us a treatment to follow. For sick, probably gives us a prescription of some kind of antibiotic to take. If they don't give us a shot, which doctors don't seem to give out shots when you're sick like they do. As a kid, seems like when I was a kid, every time I was sick, I got a shot. Uh, and so I never I tried to ignore it or deny I was sick when I was sick because I didn't want another shot. But today, it's more an oral antibiotic. Well, if we want to be cured of our condition, whether it's sickness or a sprained limb or a rash or whatever it is, if we want to be healed, we have to follow the doctor's orders. <coughs> but if we ignore the doctor's orders and we don't do what the doctor tells us to do, 
Then we can't be surprised when we're still sick or that spring is still killing us, or that rash won't go away, or whatever. It's just like when you have certain types of surgery, you have to have rehabilitation. If you don't go to, re to rehab, then that limb, that shoulder, or knee, or hip, or whatever, is not going to be back functioning like it was because you ignored the instructions you were given. That's the way it is with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit directs us. If we ignore His directions, then we shouldn't be surprised if we find ourselves in a mess because we've fallen into a temptation the Holy Spirit tried to prevent us from falling into. The Holy Spirit is our spiritual doctor. The Holy Spirit is sent by Jesus Christ Himself to give us what we need to face daily life. On our own, we have no chance of resisting temptation. On our own, we have no chance to defeat the devil. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can drive temptation away. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we can defeat the devil more times than not. Again, yes, there will be a time when the devil wins. When the devil sees successful because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But relying on the Holy Spirit, we can resist that sin and temptation more often than we think. If you have a camera or a radio or a flashlight or an iPad or a tablet or any of these other things that run on batteries, you know that if you turn them on and nothing happens, the battery's dead. The power source is not there. Now with traditional items, we just take off the back and screw uh, the end and dump the batteries out and put new batteries in. With things like iPads and tablets and laptops and all that, you have a rechargeable battery so you Put the plug in to the wall and to the computer and the battery recharge it. Your cell phone uh, the same way. But the thing is it has a power source. If that power source is ended, the mechanism won't work. The Holy Spirit is our power source. The Holy Spirit is that power source that keeps us in the true faith. The Holy Spirit is a power source that enables us to go through the trials and tragedies and the surprises and mistakes of life. It puts us through the trials, tragedies, and tribulations so that we will remain faithful to Jesus Christ and remember, as St. Paul tells us, that all things work for the good for those who love the Lord. And so we must be filled and led by the Holy Spirit in order to defeat the devil. The Holy Spirit provides that spiritual power which runs our spiritual lives. I've shared this story with you before, but it bears repeating. Two visitors were at Niagara Falls, and they were admiring the beauty of the Horseshoe Falls and the Brado Valley. All that water as it comes over and over the falls and crashes down below into the river below. And seeing those people who are brave enough to get on those boats and get real close so they get all drenched by the water as it crashes from above. I know when I stood there and watched the falls, I for the life of me could not figure out why anybody would want to get in a barrel and try to go over that thing. If you could just see how fire that water is and it went over the falls to but anyhow, these two were looking at it, one turned to the other, and he said, that is the most unused power in the world. To which the other visitor said, no, my friend, he said, Niagara Falls is an unused power, but it's not the most unused power in the world. The most unused power in the world is the power of the Holy Spirit. How many difficult situations could we keep ourselves from if we would led by the Holy Spirit instead of being led by the world. How many times
times can we defeat the devil if we only allow ourselves to be full of and led by the Holy Spirit. So to defeat the devil, we must be like Jesus. We must be full of the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit. For doing so, we can defeat the devil to the glory of God. This is how you defeat the devil. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now sing, Precious Lord, take my hand in number 773 in the back of your worship. Hymn number 773. This hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, was written by the uh, African-American evangelist, piano player. He played blues piano for Al Capone, and he was converted, and he started playing for Jesus. He played music, uh, hymns and things in honor of Jesus, rather than what he was playing before in honor of, of Satan. He was playing uh, his, in the gospel and songs when he learned from a telegram that his wife Nettie was dead. He, a friend was driving him back and then he learned that his son also was killed. He was mourning her loss when he felt a strange calm come over him and he, the words of this beautiful hymn came to him, Precious Lord, take my hand. Written by Thomas Dorsey in 1932. Thomas Dorsey, not the great band director, but Thomas Dorsey, the African-American evangelist.
crops be successfully planted and that the coming growing season might yield abundant harvest and all the bounty needed to feed this hungry world. Let us pray to the Lord, the Lord our hearts, that the church be strengthened in its 40-day Lenten journey, be delivered from all temptations and harm, and be found faithful on the day of Christ's coming. Let us pray to the Lord, the Lord our hearts, that by grace, those preparing for baptism and those who will affirm their baptism may confess with their lips that Jesus is Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That those people who lack a home and wander in our modern wilderness might be helped to find a permanent place of welcome. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That those who are ill or in any need may find comfort and deliverance in the generosity of the Lord of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That this community through Lent mom's giving, might find joy in returning the first fruits of their labors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the witness of the faithful departed may strengthen us in our journey, and that we be joined with them by the power of our baptism into Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Grant these prayers, merciful God, and all that we need as we eagerly await the Easter feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Nelson and Linda Smith of the ushers today, they're bringing forth the offering plates. And we'll now receive our offering. This is March the 10th. This is the first Sunday of Lent. We invite you to come worship with us on Sundays at 8 o'clock and 10.30, Wednesday at 6.30, and you would hear the Beatitudes. The pastor is giving a lesson on the Beatitudes, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. We invite you to come worship with us anytime. Our service today is in honor of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. We receive the Holy Spirit after baptism. We receive the Holy Spirit also, and, and with Jesus we are children of God. Jesus is our brother, and we're God's children. We have the Holy Spirit with us. We just have to invite the Holy Spirit into our heart. He will lead us. He will protect us from the devil's temptations. His temptations are great when we receive the Holy Spirit. But Jesus has gone up into heaven. He's in heaven right now, and the Holy Spirit is here on earth with us. As he said, he uh, went to heaven so he, the Holy Spirit could be with us. And he's at God's right hand. We pray, we pray to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we're emphasizing today Jesus in the wilderness was tempted by the devil and by the Holy Spirit who was able to resist the temptations. We can resist temptation the same way. Just invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts and make Jesus the Lord of your life.
words of your Son. Give us a light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feet. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you, now and forever. Amen. We conclude our worship with Savior like a shepherd. Lead us. Hymn number 789 in the back of your worship. Hymn number 789. This hymn, of course, is in honor of Jesus and how he's led through the wilderness and how he leads us as a shepherd. This hymn was written by Dorothy A. Thrupp, T-H-R-U-P-P, -P. she lived 1779-1847. Dorothy wrote this in a collection of songs for children. She thought the hymns were too, too, too uh, uh, serious. She wanted them to be more lighthearted and easier to sing. And Regan Bradbury agreed with her, he wrote the tune. As the tune would be a more lilting tune, faster, not so dreary as some of the hymns they had. Sunday in Lent. This is March the 10th, 2019. We hope you've received a blessing from worshiping with us. We pray that you will invite Jesus into your heart and 
with the service, we have confessed our sins, we have, have uh, recited the Apostles' Creed, we've said we believe, we repent, we believe, we love God, we love one another. That's all, we, all Jesus asks of us. And we have the Holy Spirit with us. The flowers today are given, the flowers that you've seen on the altar are given by the Perks family in honor of Vicki Perks' birthday. Happy birthday, Vicki. She's the director of the choir, Vicki Perks. Also, the flowers are given by Janet Hogue in memory of Madge Adams. Madge Adams was a very faithful Christian in this church. So Janet Hogue has given flowers in memory of Madge Adams. Flowers also given by Doug and Lynn Mitterholzer and family and member of my dad, Otto, on his birthday, March the 12th. Otto Mitterholzer was also a very faithful member of this church. Mitterholzer family have been pillars of the church for many years here. Otto just died recently. Otto and Sue had the bowling program. Were very wonderful Christians. They followed Jesus every step of the way. They repented, they believed, they loved God, they loved one another. We loved others, just as we commanded to do Jesus, our brother, to receive the Holy Spirit, we're children of God.